I believe in the thing that I read years ago, which I think was in the Bible, it said, knock and the door will be opened. And it's true. If you want to know anything in this life, you just have to knock on the door, whether that be some physically on somebody else's door and ask them a question, or which I was lucky to find is the meditation is, you know, it's all within. Uh, the goal, there's like a goal in life, which is to, uh, really the only reason to be living is to uh, have complete, full knowledge, full bliss consciousness. Everything else is just mundane and secondary. And so I wanted to know some method of uh, enlarging my own consciousness. And that's meditation. It's been there millions, millions of years. It's always there. And uh, knock and the door will be opened. The thing that really got me interested was after being brought up as uh, a Catholic until I was about 13, I, I couldn't take it any longer because it was just full of hypocrisy. And uh, the teachings of an Indian uh, called Vivekananda which really impressed me. He said, if there's a God, we must see him. If there's a soul, we must perceive it. Otherwise, it's better not to believe. It's better to be an outspoken atheist than a hypocrite. Whereas the Catholics were teaching me to be a hypocrite. Just be a hypocrite. Believe what we tell you. Don't try to have any experience. But the whole basis of religion is to have the experience, have that perception. So there's these methods for God perception, self-realization, which is yoga and meditation and the process you have to get from a spiritual master, somebody who is an authority on this sort of thing. Yeah, there's many different techniques and the technique we did with uh, Maharishi, Mahesh Yogi, was uh, a form of silent meditation, which, you know, you can transcend, the, the, the purpose is to transcend from this relative state of consciousness to an absolute state of consciousness. People think this is me, you know, and this isn't me, this is just a bag of bones. Basically everybody is a uh, spirit, which is really what Christ was here to tell everybody about. The kingdom of heaven that lies within, which is the state of being, pure consciousness. Yeah. So through many years of uh, pollution, of consciousness through material energy and this association, then uh, we've all ended up in a fallen state. But really, everybody is basically a potentially divine. So yoga, all these methods are really uh, ancient methods just to stop further pollution of your system and consciousness and to cleanse the system. The whole thing of purity that they talk about in religion is really a a mental, physical, and spiritual purity, which is uh, obtained through discipline and through practice. So the meditation we did with uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi was uh, to sit silently and to transcend through the sense of sound, like you can transcend with hearing or with touch or taste or vision, like I think some Buddhists meditate by concentrating on a, an object like either a garden, Japanese gardens, or on candles looking at, into the flame, and they transcend that way. But this method was to transcend through sound. So you given uh, a mantra. The mantra brings all your body to rest. It calms everything down, and it, it brings sort of harmony and uh, union just to all your senses. And this way, your thoughts become fine and fine and fine until you can arrive at a point which is transcendental, which means beyond. It's beyond the senses, beyond intellect. People always say, I'm the beetle who changed the most, but really that's what I see life is about. The point is, unless you're God conscious, then you have to change because, because it's a waste of time. Everybody is so limited and so really useless when you think of, about the limitations on yourself and the whole thing is to change try and make everything better and better and that's what the physical world is about is change but the change that happens through uh, meditation i mean it's a, it's a gradual sort of thing but the more you realize <clears throat> with anything with just growing older the more you realize it helps you in some way with meditation you're able to 
understand that there is this unity lying beneath everything. There's something there within every atom that holds it all together and that in actual fact it really is one. But on an intellectual level to say it is we are one, then, I mean, again, you miss the point. It's an experience. You have to really have that perception that it's one. Maharishi said, for a forest to be green, each tree must be green. So if you stand back and criticize the rest of the people, it's again, Christ said, put your own house in order. Automatically, if I'm to criticize somebody else, I suddenly come back to myself and realize, until I'm straight, then I'm in no position to be able to criticize others. So it, it helps, it's, it's a slow, also it helps in as much as you can, any time of the day, any situation you're in, you can get control of yourself just by sitting quietly and by turning off from the external uh, problems we have, noise and all this society that you can go inside yourself where it's always calm and peaceful. It's like being on this level of consciousness. It's like the ocean, which is always changing, and the bottom of the ocean is always calm and still. And if you're not anchored to the bottom of the ocean, you're at the mercy of whatever change goes on. Now, this process of meditation or um, in different types of yoga is all just a way to anchor yourself securely to that pure state of consciousness to that state of being so that you can still act out your life on the surface but you remain anchored securely because if you think about it there isn't anything I mean in creation the whole of creation that <clears throat> is perfect you know there is nothing that goes wrong with nature only what man does then it goes wrong but we are made of that thing the very essence of our being, of every atom in our body, is made from this perfect knowledge, this perfect consciousness, but superimposed on that is through, if I can use the word, the tidal wave of bull that goes through the world. It's cable, you can say that. Yeah, so there's this, we're being barraged by, um, you know, by bull. But not only that, the way the world is structured, or the way creation is structured, we have duality, which says yes, no, good, bad, loss, gain, birth, death. And it's a, this circle that you get trapped in. It's like the Memphis Blues again. And that's the hardest thing to, <clears throat> to understand. What is causing um, both of these things? What's causing day and night, good and bad? It's all the, the cause, and this is the effect. So. I mean, we're getting really transcendental here, but well, to no, say I, that it, our our physical being is really um, on a very, very subtle level. It's just like the sap in a tree mm -hmm. is is the sap, and it runs throughout all the parts of the tree. Now, it's like that. Our bodies are manifesting into physical bodies, but the cause, the sap, is pure consciousness, pure awareness, and that is perfect and perfect knowledge. But we have to tap into that. Uh, I mean, the four of us all experience the thing, and in a way we gained strength and supported each other uh, in the turmoil. But, yeah, I think fame is a good thing in terms of giving you uh, heightened experience or, or at least more experience. And, um, but then it's what you do with that or what, what that uncovers. I think, for me, you know, as I say, I realize I want to, you know, I just want more. This isn't it. This isn't it, you know. Um, fame is not the goal. Money, you know, although money is nice to have, it can buy you a bit of freedom. You know, you can go to the Bahamas when you want. But it doesn't, it's not the answer. And the answer, you know, is um, how to get peace of mind and how to be happy. That's really what we're supposed to be here for. And... Uh, the difficult thing is that we all go through our lives and through our days and we don't experience bliss and you know it's a very subtle thing and uh, to experience that and to be able to know how to do that is uh, something you don't just stumble across you've got to search for it did you experience bliss on stage or in the studio um, in a way did performing it put you in touch with with that with that bliss well, we had happiness at times, and um, but 
you know, not the kind of bliss I mean, where like every atom of your body is just buzzing, you know, because it's again, it's beyond the mind. It's like you know, it's it's when there's no thought involved. That I mean, it's it's a pretty tricky thing to try to um, <coughs> to get to that stage because it means controlling the mind and being able to transcend the relative states of consciousness waking sleeping dreaming which is all we we really know uh, but there is another state that um, goes beyond all that and it's in that state that's where you know the bliss and the knowledge uh, you know that that's available is I know the one uh, benefit concert that you've done in England in the past uh couple of 20 years or so was for the natural law party back in 92 I believe yeah. what brought that about well it was um, one of the things that made it easier was I'd just done a tour of Japan with Eric Clapton's band so I was kind of up to speed with um, the songs that I was doing and I had a, the band was there that knew all the material but that was I think there was a general election going on and as far as I'm concerned Whichever, you know, the Neil Innes, you know, from uh, the Ruddles. The Ruddles. He wrote a song once and he said, no matter who you vote for, the government always gets in. And it's like that, you know, in, in England, you always get, um, as far as I was concerned, the left, the center, and the right, they're all really the same. They're all different shades of the same grayness. And although it's a long shot, you know, Maharishi try to get these people formed together into a party which would be called the Natural Law Party, which was... Um, the same Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And the idea behind it really is to have consciousness as the basic thing, because if uh, really, you know, we get in government or we get in any situation in life, we get the reflection of our own consciousness. We can't really complain about what we have because that is us. It's a reflection of our, our own being. Now, if we could have um, people who are actually conscious in a spiritual sense, then all the underlying problems to society, I mean, it wouldn't be able to change just overnight, but over a generation or two generations, you could have things where, for instance, say in England, and I'm sure it's the same here, you get disease so you've got a lot of expenditure on hospitals and on fixing up people who have disease now the problem is that most doctors they study disease they don't know about health so you'd need to reprogram stuff so that you teach people about how to be healthy that way you don't spend so much money on on disease you'd have people would be healthier you wouldn't have such a you know a requirement for you know all this all the various things that take up all the money you'd be able to use that money for something else so the natural law that operates on this planet or in the universe everything as i said earlier everything works in a perfect order and there's a scheme to things which has a certain intelligence that drives it and makes everything work now if we as individuals could go to that level of consciousness where we can bring it into our being and as Maharishi Mahesh Yogi once said for a forest to be green each tree must be green so it's no use just one or two people being you know like this you'd have to make the whole of society if they had that understanding and that's what I think really you'd have to you know school people um, right from being children, teach people about their health, about their bodies, about consciousness, because it's all to do with consciousness. Raise the level of consciousness, and then everything automatically becomes better. That is, all things must pass just shows the nature of the physical world. Everything is changing all the time. We get born and we die. But we are in this body, and we go through from birth to death. We stay the same. The soul is the same, but the body is changing. And like that, you know, it's the nature of, it's called duality, and it just keeps changing, but everything passes except the essence of that, which is our soul. You know, I don't believe I have great musical ability 
or great lyrical ability. And I have a bigger problem than that is because of my influence from Indian music and that whole spirit thing is that I don't see the point to writing most songs. Like most people will write, I could write hundreds of songs, you know, hey baby, what you gonna do? You know, that I could churn them out, but I don't want to. If I'm gonna say something, I'd like it to have some kind of importance, some value so that you know, in 20 years' time, it's still, it's not just some dumb song that made, you know, some royalties. I mean, the royalties are nice, but it would be good to be able to have something a little deeper. And, and so, you know, it's very difficult how, that's why the chants of India is much better, because it's all there in Sanskrit. You just say the Sanskrit, and they're all mantras, and they're all prayers, and they all have a spiritual connection. It's much easier than trying to write in English some incredible philosophy or something that has a value. You know, I, I'm unhappy about the world being concreted over and all the forests chopped down and the air polluted and that the fact that the planet is in the control of mad people. You know, people who are crazy, people who are greedy, all these people who are selling the rainforest and, you know, any forests, just selling it because they make some money without, you know, I'm very unhappy about that, but I have a, a long-term view, which is all things must pass. I mean, before it used to be maybe they're going to blow us up with H-bombs, but even that, I thought, it don't really matter. They can't destroy what's within ourselves. Krishna said, there's no time when we didn't exist and there'll be no time when we cease to exist. The only thing that changes is the body. So even if they blew us up with H-bombs, our soul will stay in our other astral body and the only thing that won't be here is physical. So, you know, I'm sad about it, uh, the world, but I look at it from within and without.